Okay, here's the lesson for the second part of section 6.3. In the first part, we learned how to, when given the equation in standard form, so when given the equation of a parabola in form y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, we learned how to graph that, how to make it nice and look like something like that. Okay. In this section, we're going to go the other way. If we're given information about the graph, okay, if I tell you, you know, what the vertex is, or you know, what the x-intercepts are, and what another point is, you're going to be able to write the equation in standard form. So you're going to go from there to here this time. Okay. So this second part is going the opposite way. First part, we went from the equation to the graph. This part, we're going from the graph to the equation. Okay, so the objective, write the equation of a quadratic in standard form when we're given the x-intercepts and another point on the parabola somewhere. Okay, so we're going to have to um, recall some of the skills we've learned in previous chapters for this, for, to do this. Okay, so to write an equation in the form y equals ax squared plus b x plus c, that should say, okay, for a parabola with x-intercepts of negative 2 and 4, with another point on the parabola at 216. Okay, so it's given us x-intercepts and it's given us another point on the parabola. So it's given us information about what the graph looks like. So the graph looks roughly like this. Okay, so here's our coordinate grid. Uh, it's got an x-intercept at negative 2 and 4. Um, and the vertex, you know, is somewhere up here at 216. So we could connect these and figure out exactly what the graph looks like. That's what this parabola looks like. How are we going to write an equation to represent the exact shape of this parabola? We know how to do that. Okay? How we do that, okay, we're given x-intercepts and a point. The way we're going to write it in standard form is by first writing in factored form. If we remember back from chapter 4, factored form is y equals a times x minus r times x minus s. Okay? So we have all the necessary information to write this in factored form except for the value of a, but we can solve for that. Okay? So we have the x-intercepts. The x-intercepts are the r and s values. Okay? And another point on the parabola, any point has an x and a y coordinate, so we can use, um, we can sub these in for x and y. So if we plug all of the information we know in, so plug in um, 16 for y, we don't know a, we're, we'll solve for that. x is 2, r is negative 2, so minus negative 2, okay, minusing a negative, oops, I didn't want to undo all of that, okay, minusing a negative just becomes a plus. So we have 2 plus 2 as one of the factors, and then x is 2 minus 4. Okay? Now we can solve for a. Just use our bed math skills. 2 plus 2 is 4. 2 minus 4 is negative 2. 4 times negative 2 is negative 8. And then to isolate a, we're going to have to divide the negative 8 to the other side. 16 over negative 8 is equal to a. That means our a value is negative 2. Okay, so now that we have our a value, we can write this in factored form. Okay, remember when we write our final equation, we plug in for everything except for x and y, because this equation has to be the general equation for all points on the, on the parabola. So we can't plug in anything for x and y. Okay, so we know a is negative 2, x minus r we know our r value is negative 2, so x minus negative 2 is going to appear as x plus 2, and then x minus s, and we know our s value is 4, so x minus 4 is our, is our last factor here. So that's the equation in factored form. Okay, so we have it in factored form now. Why we put it in factored form is because this can easily be manipulated to be into standard form. If you look at this, we have a binomial times a binomial. We know how to expand that and get rid of the brackets, okay? Because standard form 
has no brackets. Okay, y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. There's no brackets there at all. So we want to get rid of these brackets. In order to do that, we just use the FOIL method. If we multiply the first terms, the outside terms, the inside terms, and the last terms. Okay, so we're going to use the FOIL method, and that will turn this into standard form. Okay, don't forget after you've um, multiplied these binomials, you then have to multiply that whole product by negative 2, because negative 2 needs to be multiplied by, um, by these as well. Okay, don't forget about that negative 2 up front. You'll see once we get to the next part here. Okay, so step number 2, I've already started explaining. Um, we need to write what we have here, the factored form equation, we need to write that in standard form um, by using FOIL. Okay, so you could multiply the negative 2 by the x plus 2 first and then multiply that product by x minus 4, that's fine. The order of multiplication doesn't matter. The way I like to do it is multiply the binomials first, okay. Um, make sure you put the result in the brackets so that you remember you have to distribute the negative 2 to each of those terms. So I'm going to do multiply the first terms, x times x is x squared. The outside terms, x times negative 4 is negative 4x. Inside, 2 times x is positive 2x. Then the last terms, 2 times negative 4 is negative 8. Okay. I can collect some like terms. Remember, like terms are terms with the exact same variable to the exact same exponent. So these both have an x to the 1, so I can collect those. Negative 4x plus 2x is negative 2x. There we go. Those are all the like terms that I can collect. Now, good thing I put this product in brackets so that I remember to distribute this negative 2 to each of these to get rid of the brackets. I can go ahead and do that. Negative 2 times x squared is negative 2x squared. Negative 2 times negative 2x is positive 4x. Negative 2 times negative 8 is positive 16. And there we go. There's our final answer. This is a quadratic in standard form. You see this looks exactly like standard form. We have a y equals an a value. Our a value is negative 2 x squared, plus a bx, our b is 4, plus a c, okay, our c is 16. So this is standard form. We've done what we've set out to accomplish. So just a quick review of what we did. Okay, We were given the information about the graph. We know it looks something like this. We took that information. Because I'm given the x-intercepts Okay, and another point, I know how to write that in factored form. I just plug in everything I know, the r and s values, the x-intercepts, and then the other point I use for my x and y, and then I solve for a. I can then write my equation in factored form by plugging in for a, r, and s, not x and y. Okay? I then take that factored form equation, use FOIL to expand it, to get rid of the brackets, and then what I'm left with after I collect my like terms is a quadratic in standard form, and that's what we wanted to do. Okay? And remember in the first part of, um, of this section 6.3, in the first video I did, we learned how to change this, the equation, into the graph. Okay, we did that by setting an equal to zero, factoring, um, solving for each factor, okay, setting each factor equal to zero and solving for x. That gives us our x-intercepts, and then we would use our x-intercepts to find the vertex, and then we would graph. Okay, so we can go both ways now. Um, any questions, uh, just let me know. If you want to try another example, just to have some practice, try this one here. Okay. Any questions, let me know.